Welcome to this simple anatomy for artist series. Today we're gonna cover the sculpt. To sculpt or draw any believable face, realistic or stylized, a good understanding of the skull is very important. The skull structure greatly affects the face, so understanding what is underneath will take your art to a whole new level. Let's quickly take a look at the names of the main bones of the skull that are important for artists and how they ultimately affect the form of the face. Learning them will make remembering and understanding the skull forms a lot easier. First we have the frontal bone. So the frontal bone over here is basically the forehead of a person. You want to take a look at how long it is, how wide it is. Uh, how is it in relation to the rest of the face? Next, we have the bra ridge. So uh, the bra ridge is basically the bras of a person and you wanna see how much it protrudes, right? It's not a straight line, but it protrudes a bit. Sometimes it protrudes a lot, right? So that affects the face of a person. Next, we have the nasal bone. So the nasal bone is over here and it affects how big the nose is or how small it is, how far it goes outwards or how flat it is. It also affects whether the nose has a bump. So the bump is usually around this area. So pay attention to this bone over here. Talking about the nose, we also have the nasal cavity. So how wide this area over here will affect how wide the nose is. The wider it is, the wider the nose will be. Next, we have the orbits. This is where the eye sits in. So this makes it a very important area of the skull. Pay attention to how deep it goes, how much it goes inwards, the form of the orbits, how much it curves, all of that. Again, very important. Next, we have the zygomatic bone. This is also known as the cheekbone. So this is a very, very important bone to look out for. This dictates the form of the cheeks, whether it's big, small, flat, all of that. So again, pay attention to the zygomatic bone or the cheekbone. Next, we have the maxilla and the mandible. Maxilla is the upper jawbone over here and mandible is the lower jawbone over here. Now, these are two very important bones, but specifically the mandible is one you wanna pay attention to. You know, whether the chin is wide, narrow, whether the jaw is sharp, whether it's round, how wide it is. All of that hugely affects the design of your character. It affects whether it's masculine, whether it's feminine, it affects the look of the character. Really, again, this part of the bone, very important to pay attention to. You also wanna pay attention to the dental arch. This is why the mouth is not straight. It goes around this arch over here, around the teeth. It's very important to take a look at the side of the skull as well. The cranium, it has an egg shape. It's not a circular spherical shape. You also have to pay attention to the cranium's shape from the front as well. We also wanna pay attention to the ear canal. Notice that's around the middle of the skull. This is where the ears go. We also have the mastoid process over here. This is where the sternocleidomastoid muscle goes. This is the neck muscle. Again, another important part. This is again, if you pay attention, behind the ears. Going back to the mandible, again, pay attention to the angle of the mandible, so the angle of the jaw over here, where it's located under the mouth, as you can see, so not above it, under it. And we also have the mandible protuberance, so how far the chin goes. Does it go outwards a lot? Does it, is it receded? All of that really affects your character. Again, pay attention to all of these forms. An important thing to learn is proportions. Now, these are general guidelines. This is what's globally accepted as what a skull would look like, but you don't wanna follow this to a T. Every skull is different, every person is different, so naturally our proportions will vary. But again, generally speaking, this is what the skull would look like. If you follow these steps, these proportions, then you're gonna get something similar to a skull. In this example, I split the skull into six different parts. Now we split it into different parts simply because it's easier to remember that way. So the way to remember it is the middle of the skull is generally where the eye line will be. And then if we split the bottom part into thirds, we have the bottom of the nose over here, the bottom of the mouth and the chin. If we look upwards, we'll have the bra ridge. So again, thirds. And then the forehead, this is around the area where the hairline will be at. So the hairline, well, that will depend on the person, obviously. And finally, the top of the cranium. Looking at the proportions of the skull from the side, similarly to the front, we have the top of the cranium, the forehead, the bra. We have the eye line, so where the eyes go. We have the nose, the bottom of the nose over here. And then we have the bottom of the mouth. So I'm gonna quickly sketch the lips. And finally, we have the chin. We also have 
around the middle of the skull over here, the middle of the cranium, we have the ears. So the ears start around the level of the eyebrows, like so, and stops at the bottom of the nose. Again, general guidelines. We also have the neck that starts around the middle as well. Part of learning anatomy is going through a lot of reference and you gotta be really good at observing what you're looking at. Now here's a tip, focus on the angles. Look at the outer angles, look at the inner angles. For example, if you take a look at the angles of the jaw of the skull over here, we get this shape right here. Now, if we go for a smaller angle, then we're gonna get a more angular looking character. It really changes the form of the face. Again, if we take a look at the side over here, you can see there's a lot of outer angles going on that you can focus on and change the angles to change the shape of the character you're working on. You can see how it goes outwards, inwards, outwards, inwards, outwards. There's a certain harmony. And by playing around with the angles, you get different shapes and hence a different character. When sculpting the skull, make sure you go step by step. You wanna make sure that the foundation, the building block is strong, it's powerful, so that the end result will just be as strong or as powerful. Now, if the proportions are wrong over here, if it's not looking right, then most likely the end result won't look right either. It'll look bad, you'll end up with a bad sculpt. Otherwise, you'll end up spending a lot of time trying to fix what you could have done right from the beginning. So again, don't skip steps, do it step by step. I'm going to take you through the five stages of sculpting a skull. Level one is primary forms. It's basic proportions. Keep it simple. Just, you know, pay attention to the height of the skull, the width of the skull, the outer angles, but keep it at that. Nothing complicated. Don't add details. Aside from proportions, make sure you're sculpting planes, top planes, side planes, front planes, bottom planes, back planes, all of it. When you're working with 3D, even when you're drawing, you really want to pay attention to the form as a whole. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a really flat sculpt. Level two is still primary forms, but now we're hinting planes. And we can see how that really affects the form. I'm sculpting the planes of the temple, the side of the head. I'm starting to hint the cheekbones. I'm hinting the width of the mouth by carving the sides over here, by carving the jaw over here, the width of the chin, all of that, while still keeping it simple. So stay simple and just start hinting the planes from all sides. Level three is all about secondary forms. This is where I'm adding different parts of the skull and refining the volume a bit. So you can see how I refined the temple of the skull, how I started adding the orbit, the eye socket, the nasal cavity over here, really showing the spherical form of the mouth and the form of the cheekbones. Level four is still secondary forms, but this time we're focused on planes. We're really sculpting all of these planes from all directions. We're really trying to understand the form from the reference we're using, right? If you're, if you're looking at a skull reference, you're not just sculpting what you're saying, but you're really trying to understand all of the directions. Here's a demonstration of what goes through my head when I sculpt something complex. So I deconstruct it into big, simple shapes, and I start adding planes, looking at the volume, the width, the height, the proportions, all of that, I try to pay attention and observe all of that, and then I start sculpting, and I start with something simple, and I build on it like you can see, and then we get something really nice. Level five is tertiary forms. This is where you start adding details. Now you can spend as much time as you want in this stage, adding these little details and making your sculpt pretty. And this is basically only if you wanna get a final finished sculpt. But the most important parts are level one to level four. Get them right before you go to level five, otherwise this will not look good. Also for learning purposes, level one to level four are the most important levels. This is where you learn the most. Once you get really good at your sculpts and sculpting in general, then you can start having fun and putting more time into level five. Before we sculpt a skull, we need to prep for reference and guidelines for proportions. Search for real skull images to use as reference. The more references you have, the better. To have your own guides in Blender, you can create a plane, rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, click on object properties, scroll down to viewport display, change display as to wireframe and check in front. Divide the plane into six parts with five loop cuts, scale it from the front a bit and place it, duplicate it, rotate it, and repeat the process. Also make sure you aren't in perspective mode when using these guides. They won't line up with your skull. You can also use your hands instead for measurement as you get more comfortable and experienced. Remember, you don't have to be too accurate. These are just general guidelines. All right, time to sculpt a skull and show you how it works in five steps. Step one, shape a sphere from the front and from the side to match the skull's proportions. Focus on your reference and pay attention to the outline of the skull. Keep it real simple. Notice how I didn't subdivide the sphere yet. Keep your poly count low if you can. It makes it easier to manipulate the form. Also, at this stage, the move brush is more than enough. 
Step 2. Remesh your sculpt and start hinting the planes of the skull. Remember to stick to primary big forms. We don't want to rush into details early on. I'm currently working with a little over 3800 polygons and I'm mostly using the move brush, clay strips and smooth brush to work the forms. Step 3. Increase your skull poly count and start working on the secondary forms. Carve the eye sockets, hint the nasal cavity, refine the cheekbone and other skull forms. Use your guidelines to adjust the proportions if needed. Make sure to pay attention to all sides. I'm currently a little over 7000 polygons, still using mostly the move, smooth and clay strips brush. Occasionally the crease brush as well. Step 4. Remesh your skull again and start refining the planes. Pay attention to the forms of the skull, the thickness and direction of each part, and simplify all of that into planes. This is an amazing way to practice. I started at 20,000 polygons and later increased it up to 46,000 to refine the planes even more, but you don't need to go up that high. Also, I'm still working with the same few brushes as earlier. Step 5. Remesh your skull again and start working on the final stage. Sculpt the tertiary forms of the skull and add details. Mark the borders of the teeth, carve the nasal cavity, and continue to carve and refine the skull. Don't focus on only one part. Work all areas and sculpt back and forth making sure you keep harmony all over. Carve the lower teeth and push it inwards, then start sculpting the upper teeth, adding and carving the form of the teeth as a whole. Slightly indicating the teeth is more than enough. Continue sculpting the skull pushing its tertiary forms as much as you want until you're satisfied. The poly count of the skull is at 197,000 and I continue to use the same brushes as earlier with the addition of occasionally using the clay and scrape brush. Once you're done with your skull, appreciate your work. Nice. If you want to learn more, I got courses on sculpting, anatomy and more. Check out my online store for more of that, I'll leave a link in the description below. I'll release more anatomy videos over here, so make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to find out when I do. Cool. I'll see you in the next video. You are beautiful. beautiful.